So you're wondering now how to limit your child's video game time now that they have video games. Let's get into that today. Vicki, maybe we start today with an acknowledgement that you don't have to have video games in your home. <laughs> no, you don't have to. There are some reasons you might choose to. Now, your kids are going to have some opinions about that because they're typically fans yeah. and all their friends have them and stuff too. Right. You are the parent. Shall I repeat that? <laughs> That's news, right? You are the parent. And because you're the parent, you get to make the rules. And it's not because you're smarter than they are, more righteous than they are. It's not about that. It's about you're the parent. And because of that, you're in charge of things. So you get to decide if this is even going to be an issue. It is a totally legitimate choice to say, you know what? We're not going to have video game systems in our home. That's fine. Yeah. However, it's such a prominent part of our culture now that probably your kids are going to encounter it at some point and eventually they'll bring it into their own life, whether you want them to or not. So let's see if we can use this as something that could be a tool for us as a parent. The key here is control. Control. Okay. Now that is a tricky word. It is because <laughs> if you noticed some things you control, other things you don't. Mm -hmm. When it comes to video games, we have to be ready to control what we can mm -hmm. control. Now, what I'm talking about here is basically access to the game system, for example, or access to even electricity to run the game system. Where is that game system housed? There are so many video games that can be accessed over a phone or a yeah. small handheld device. It's getting a little harder as parents to control all of the access points. So maybe that's the place where we start is you figure out what it is that you control so that we can focus on those areas. And I think it's important to get kind of clear about what your rules might be about when they have access. Not only, mm, so you're, you're gonna get clear about the control of the access, what, mm -hmm. what part you control, and then maybe the timing. Which just reminded me of something important, Vicki. Let's keep this positive. Right. You want to get to yes. This is a basic parenting strategy, but let's use it with the video games. You wanna get to yes. So your kids are asking, can I play these video games? Yes! When or if, and that's why it's important to get yeah. clear about what the parameters are around that. Are the video games available before the homework or the schoolwork is done? Uh-huh. And you get to choose that. We're not telling you what's right or wrong. That's your choice. Right. But just realize that that's something you're going to want to address. A little bit of a hint. And this goes back to grandma's rule, if we call it that. <laughs> Work first play after. Mm -hmm. And that's a good general rule because the kids aren't going to be motivated to do their work after. And they'll promise, oh, I'll, well, do, I'll it. do it. I promise if you'll just let me play this game, I will do my job after that. And they'll promise you till the cows come home. Uh -huh. The truth of the matter is they're going to work harder before they play than they will after they play if you set it up as a contingency. Right. So you get to yes, stay positive. I don't want you as a parent getting into this trap of, no, you can't do that, or no, being this no, no, no. Yeah. mean, restrictive parent. In fact, just connect with this for a minute. You, you are a benevolent, generous, loving parent. You are. And the provider of good things. Yes. Which is probably why they have a game system in the first place. Connect with that for a minute. Your kids already have more than they probably deserve, which proves my point. You are a benevolent, generous, loving parent. Embrace that, live it, and own it. And then from there, let's get to yes. So when they want to use a video game, yes. When or if. Those are the contingency yeah. words. And I was just going to add something. If you're a child watching this and wondering, oh, how, what, what are you telling my parents about it? A Sorry. really great <laughs> question, a way to phrase a question if you're a child who wants to play the game is you say, Mom, what would it take for me to be able to have 35 minutes on the game system? 
And so then that sets you up. You realize that there are often contingencies. There are things that have to happen. Yeah. Um, and so it, and, and it's a great way to get to yes. What will it take for me to be able to get there? One of our kids figured this out. Yeah. And as he used that phrase, it changed how we responded as a parent. It's quite easy to figure out what has to happen for them to get to where they want to be because then you get a win-win situation pretty, Notice pretty quickly. It's not a yes-no question. No. What would it take, Mom, for me to be able to play that game for an hour? Mm-hmm. Oh, she is going to love that. And Mom or Dad, you want to frame it in a positive way. So I would encourage you to stay away from things like, if you don't get your homework done, you can't play that game. Do you see how negative yeah, that is? That's a lot of negatives in one statement. We can say exactly the same thing by saying, when your homework is done, you may have Excellent. however much time you've decided on the game. And you have to be ready to enforce it. Do not expect your kids to enforce your rules. Yeah. That's not going to happen. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, I wanted to back up even one step, Uh, be aware. One thing, now you don't always have to do this and it might be late in the game, but one thing we decided early when we did get a game system was we were not giving it to any of the kids as a gift. It was ours or the the family game system. Because that let us keep the control. It's really hard to give it to a child as a gift and then tell them when they can or cannot use their gift. Now, I'm not saying you can't because there's still things you can control. Perhaps they only have access to the internet that they need for that at certain times or the TV to which they would hook it up. But just, I thought that that's another way to kind of keep a little bit of um, the limits. Yes. And let's talk about the context here for just a moment. I have some fairly strong opinions about this. They're just my opinions. I have raised four kids with her and I've been a shrink for a couple of decades. It is my opinion that it's not helpful to have a game system, a television and entertainment system in a child's bedroom. Can you back me up on this, Vicki? I I agree, yes. Now, again, it's your choice whether you do that or not, but here's why I'm coming down on this. Access is becoming harder and harder to control. And most of these game systems are now internet connected, meaning that they can interact with people outside of your home and family while they're playing the game. You want to maintain as much supervision and control over that experience as you can until your kids reach a level of moral maturity that you can trust them with it. And trust is something that they can earn. They can demonstrate that they're making good choices in order to have more access. But having that game system in a common area Mm Uh, like over in the side of the kitchen or in the living room area or family room where there can be more supervision, where multiple people can observe and see what's going on. That's just a good rule of thumb mm-hmm. so that we don't get kids into trouble in, in a private space with something that's connected to people who may or may not have your interests at heart. Maybe as we wrap this up today, I don't want to come across as one of those old fuddy-duddy, old-fashioned guys that thinks video games are awful and horrible and evil. I don't feel that way. In fact, I enjoy a few of them myself, Mm -hmm. and my kids have enjoyed them over the years. I think it's an amazing technology that teaches a lot of skills and gives us opportunities to experience a richer level of life. Having said that, I think it needs to be handled in moderation. There has to be some caution that's applied to it. Obviously, some of the risk factors that are out there. There's other things in life that are probably more important than the video games. And the one thing I would caution, especially as a speech language pathologist, is never allow video games or screen relationships or interactions Mm -hmm. become more important or more prevalent than face-to-face contact, especially (sighs) in our young children. Uh, They they're really they need that interaction with people one-on-one talking actual human social, contact yeah. and there's so much in their language development their social development and their um, individual self-esteem development that has to happen and it comes through interactions with other people real live living human beings yeah thank you again we are so honored and pleased that you're here on the channel that you're a positive conscious parent join us at parentingpower.com 
where you can become a part of a great community where you mm. can have support and also have access to a lot of tips and even a free training. I saw standing in the street alone, alone, alone. Her head was down, face like.